Hi, my name is Attorney Walter from the Third. I'm with Disability Resolution PA. Let's go ahead and talk about the next question on this lineup, which is how your warped expectations for disability benefits can harm you, and what the law is may be different than you perceive. So let's talk about that. Um, as you wait to be found disabled, you will tell yourself more lies. You will lie to yourself more and more and more to the point where you start believing your own lies about how the disability system works. And the reason you do this is because you are absolutely desperate to be found disabled because everything has gone wrong up and to and through this point. So the next standing is, you know, where do we go from here? Okay, so let's talk about that. How warped are your expectations and what your beliefs are? Let me move my foot. Ah, got a doogie right there. All right, there we go. The doogie was moved. All right, so let's talk about that. You may believe that if you have COPD, you'll automatically be found disabled. That is incorrect. You may believe that if you have any disabling condition, um, that you automatically will be found disabled. That is not correct unless it's an amputation because there you are already missing both of your ankles and down. So if you believe you have spinal stenosis, that's fine, but nobody said it's severe enough to actually be found disabled. But you'll sit there and you'll tell yourself over and over, because I haven't been able to work and get a job, you're forgetting that 10 years prior to this, you had a hard time getting a job before applying. But you'll sit there and tell yourself, because I can't find a job, because I can't do a job, because I blah, 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 blah. Therefore, ergo, I must be disabled. That's a lie. Um, it's not whether you can find a job. It's all about whether or not you can do a job consistently day in and day out, and that's with all of your effort and trying and not skipping out because you're abusing crack or meth or heroin or whatever. And so you have to kind of just be honest with yourself. And, and the best thing I like to tell claimants that come to me from other law firms are like, well, I heard this from my buddy. Your buddy's an idiot. He's always been an idiot. Even if he's on disability benefits, that means, you know, what was his disability? It was for uh, mental limitations and low IQ. Well, you're trusting the wrong guy. Um, what I try to explain to you guys is kind of an expectation of um, what you know versus what you don't know. What you know uh, is would be factual statements that you read from SSA documentation or things that you hear from your attorney. What you don't know is all that crap you hear from everybody else. And there's a lot of people online that are making videos about particular topics and things like that. And like, how to win on the first try. And this, uh, Some of these guys are really trying to help you, and I applaud that. But some of them are total idiots. And that's scary because they're just feeding totally helpless, totally like, you know, it's a controlled audience that really, really needs help. They're just feeding these people wrong information, which is horrific. But it's how YouTube works. Because YouTube has no fact checker. Okay, so for the most part when it comes to this stuff, I'll add that uh, disclaimer. So what you need to realize is, first off, if you haven't read it or heard it from a person, and don't go by the local field office people at the SSA, they're just as bad as those YouTube people, they have no idea. Uh, if you haven't heard it from an attorney that practices this stuff or or an ALJ, or somebody higher up in the SSA. Because I just want to clarify, the people at the bottom that are just learning, they don't know anything. They are all over the damn place. They'll they'll have they'll screw things up, they'll put things in the wrong folder digitally, they'll they'll man, they'll make a mess of things real fast. Okay. If you haven't heard it from a reliable source, and reliable does not mean your friend Earl who has disability benefits because of whatever reason, that's not a reliable source and he was found disabled 15 years ago, that means he really doesn't know what it's like because now it's a totally different system. If you haven't heard it from a reliable source, then don't lie to yourself and tell yourself that this is it, that this is how it's going to work in the future. That's not it. That's not how it works. That's not where it's going. So just don't lie to yourself. The other thing is that local libraries or different places will often put on events with disability attorneys or reps or advocates or whatever. Um, I know SOAR promotes this like huge training thing that they're doing. It's so amazing. And oh my God, wow. And these SOAR people really help these people. SOAR people, the average SOAR person, and when I mean average, I mean like 95 to 99% of them only have two days of training on how to do this stuff. And then there's SOAR reps. Two days. Two days. 
Remember how long college took? Remember how long high school took? How much did you learn from that? Years. Two days. So just be aware of that. Also be aware that um, there's hospital personnel. It's a scam where basically the hospital has a company come in that tries to maximize getting you benefits by having you fill out things for programs. And then they'll send you over to some other advocacy group. It's all a big scam. It's actually an illegal scam, but it's going on. It's even in Advent Health in Florida Hospital, Orlando Health. It's, it's in all those places. So kind of a scary thing about it is people are getting taken for a ride, and then ultimately they get pissed off, and they end up calling me, and then we go and fix it, but still they screw up the claim to begin with because you write down all this stupid crap on your forms, and those are federal statements for the rest of time, and here we go. Okay, so... When it comes to expectations, know what your source is. Number two, don't act like you know that you're going to be found disabled. You don't know. You have no clue. You could get a bad judge. You could have a really strong claim. You could get a bad judge get denied. Don't act like you know you're going to get found disabled. Don't make promises to people that you know you can't keep. I understand that you have to survive, but at the same time, be realistic. Just be realistic. Mm. I could go more into this, but the warped expectation problem is that people become emotionally connected to the idea that they will in fact be found disabled. No one has a definitive right to be found disabled, disabled um, unless it's absolutely clear that the medical evidence provides for it. So I just want you to understand that most of you watching this video are not disabled to the point where it's that kind of situation. In fact, I'd be willing to say everyone watching this video isn't disabled to that point. If they are disabled to that point, they'd be on a breathing apparatus in the local hospital. Okay, so that's, now let's look at the question again. How are your warped expectations? My doggy snoring. How are your warped expectations for disability benefits and basically, you know, how it hurts you and what the law is and how will that potentially hurt you? Keep your expectations in check because if you demand things from the SSA, okay, so I had one claimant who would call the hearing office every single Friday and have a big long chat with them every single Friday. And she got denied because she pissed off the judge every single Friday. Should have been found disabled, real clear cut case, I was happy with it, got denied. Did I know that she was calling the OHO every single Friday? I found out when the clerk uh, at the hearing office came over and told me, Could you, you know, for this claimant, please don't have them contact us anymore. Have them go through you. That's when I found out about it. I said, okay, no problem. I called the client and said, look, you cannot call them anymore. You are cut off, right? What did the client do? She started to call every single Wednesday the local field office. So she pissed off them, but they don't really have any power over the decision of the ALJ, so that... I don't really care about, but she pissed off the ALJ enough that ALJ was done. All right, my name is Attorney Walter Ruth, not the third. I'm with Disability Resolution PA in Orlando Orange County based Social Security Disability Law Firm. If you want a free consultation, the most up to date information, or a custom video made about a particular topic that you like, that's fine. Shoot me an email or give me a call, and we will go from there. Thanks so much. Have a wonderful day. Bye bye.